Hi and welcome to another video on the roaster conversion to electric. Um, it's been a while since I've done one of these videos now. Um, been really busy the last couple of years really um, and just haven't had a chance to finish these things off. But um, took the opportunity recently to uh, get down and get them done. So the three main things really I needed to finish were the charging side of things, uh, just the instrumentation and the vacuum pump uh, for the brake system. So those are all done now and um, it's really ready for the V5 to be changed, which is just confirmation that it's been changed from um, petrol car to electric car. Um, and then I can get uh, MOT and insurance on it and put it on the road. Um, so as I say, all those things are done mechanically. Um, it's been done for a while mechanically. Um, and I've done previous videos showing all the mechanical changes. So um, please have a look at those previous videos on the all the motor installation and the batteries and, and that side of things. So this time I'll cover just the finishing off of all the electrical side of things and a bit of a general run through. Um, obviously I haven't been able to drive the car very far, um, only up and down the drive in a private lane here. So looking forward to getting it out on the road and um, driving it properly. Um, so I hope the video is useful and um, yeah, please keep watching. So in case you haven't seen one before, this is a Smart Roadster. This is the coupe version, which has a slightly different um, back to it. Uh, it's got the glass boot on it. So the way I've set this out is I've put the, this was normally a rear engined car, um, but what I've done due to lack of space really in the back is all the batteries are in the front and the control system is in the back, obviously along with the motor attached to the gearbox. So I'll just run through the main pieces. So we are, there's all the um, 12 uh, Nissan Leaf or Renault Fluent cells. So these are the um, first edition of the cells, so slightly lower capacity. Well, so they could be changed for later cells now, um, just to increase, that'll increase the capacity and the range of the car already, and I haven't even finished it yet. So there are changes that could help with its range already. Um, and in here, I've also um, now added in the um, vacuum assist uh, component. So this is a vacuum pump down the bottom, um, and that's been driven by um, vacuum switch which is just running a relay, a fused relay, running the pump. Also um, connected to the pump is, is a reservoir, which is located under the front over there, as shown on a previous video, and then obviously teeing off to the, um, to the vacuum brake assist there. So that's the vacuum pump side of things all in. Also, in I've got lots of switches and fuses in the system, but basically the batteries... I've got a big chunky fruit fuse in there at the moment and uh, there's a big um, isolator so you can isolate that off from the front. Um, I haven't actually got all 12 cells running at the moment, I'm just using 10 so I'm running 80 volts um, just to keep the voltage down while I'm playing around with it and then I can connect in the last two. There's also some debate about how far they're charged so the controller can take a maximum of 105 volts I believe is its peak. So it depends how I use those um, 12 8 volt cells. So that's the front of the car. And then over in the back. So this is all the control unit that sits in the area where the old um, petrol engine used to be. Uh, so I've used the access hole and made a tray up which sits in there. Um, and everything's just bolted to that. So this replaces the 12 volt battery that used to be in the front of the car. It's obviously a little bit smaller. Um, that's fused, but then also I've put in here more recently a trip, which enables me to um, disconnect um, the power very easily. So I can just press that and that's disconnected all the power to the car so I can work on things uh, without anything going wrong. So that's quite handy. Um, that also takes power off to the front of the car for the main systems, um, the standard, all the standard stuff, as well as power off to the um, vacuum pump at the front. 
Uh, next thing along with is the DC DC converter. So that's um, taking the high voltage lines and then connecting um, or driving the uh, battery, or charging the battery. Um, also, I've got three relay, three relays in here. The uh, first one is just switched on by the um, key switch. So when you normally start the car, it brings this one in. Um, next one along is when you press or turn the key to for the old starter motor position, then it switches this one in and that latches and then brings the um, higher voltage relay in. And then that starts to initiate all the other controls to the um, main Curtis unit and so on. Uh, the Curtis unit is obviously connected directly to the motor, the three phases of the motor, and then there's just two power line in. So that will switch in the contactor. So this is the main um, high voltage contactor. Um, so we've got the power coming in from the front of the car onto this fuse block. I've got a cover over it now, so there's nothing can fall in there. That's a 500 amp fuse onto the one side of the contactor and then the contactor switches over onto the controller. Um, and the other power side is obviously the charging circuit comes in uh, through a fuse and then that goes off to the front of the car. <coughs> Next we've got the uh, low voltage or the, the 0 volt line. So that's connected onto the uh, shunt, which I've put in here. Uh, originally I was going to have a just a meter in the back so I could see the current that was being taken while being in the back of the car um, for monitoring purposes but I'm not really using it for that so um, it's but it's still in place and then obviously that goes off to the batteries at the front of the car um, also in there I've got this um, Coulomb counter or state of charge meter so that's um, going off to the uh, display on the instrument panel in the car um, plus via a USB link um, and on that we've got uh, current monitoring which is very handy because it was just the right size for the cable and it measures up to 500 amps so it's just the right unit and then it just needs the high voltage line to measure the voltage that also has a relay on it and that means that if you use the setting, um, the overcharge setting, then that will cut out the charging. And then the other side is the charging side. So what I've done here is I've taken the mains cable in from the um, socket on the side, but I was a bit concerned that if I didn't trip it, um, if anything went wrong, then there wouldn't be any way to cut the power. So I've put this RCD unit in, which is fused and obviously RCD switched. Um, so if anything's wrong, then that will cut the charge power. Um, and then the other unit in here is the equivalent, my homemade equivalent of um, an ABC um, unit that goes onto the charge socket. So that's monitoring proximity and pilot. Um, so I managed to build something which basically does the same sort of job. So it's, it's looking at the uh, ground proximity and pilot from the charge socket. It's obviously got 12, pound, 12 volt um, coming in, which is switched from the state of charge meter. And then it's output, it's got relay output on it as well, which is able to cut the power to the charger um, when you remove the socket. So the, the main thing it's doing here really is it's detecting that the charge um, socket has been connected and assuming that's the case, then it will switch in a, um, a resistor into the line uh, the charge socket or the charger will then detect that resistor is in place and the car is ready for charging and then switch the charge um, power on. Um, so that's what this little unit does here, it's just in this little printed housing. Now though I said I wouldn't go too much into the mechanics, uh, just to show the motor and how it's connected. Uh, so this is the 50 kilowatt um, brushless motor, uh, AC35 which is connected with an adapter plate um, directly coupled to the uh, smart standard gearbox. And the only thing I've done with the smart gearbox is take out the reverse gear because that's not needed. Um, and everything else, all the brake system, everything else is just as it was. So it's literally just the motor that's been changed.
Okay, so inside the car we've got the standard uh, smart gauges, obviously. The uh, gear change selector, that's just as it was, and the, and the key switch just as it was before. One thing I have changed though is I've changed over to these uh, gauges here. So it used to have a turbo boost and a temperature gauge pod, which rotate in these little positions here. Um, and I, what I've done is 3D printed these to sort of replicate a little bit the shape and style of the old gauges and just put these red bezel fronts on uh, to make it look the same as the um, speedo and so on. And then obviously this one being a square gauge, what I've done here is try to make the back of the gauge look round but the front square. Um, so they've come out quite nicely. They're 3D printed in SLA uh, resin printer. Uh, I've put a little menu button on the front there for the Curtis gauge, which I haven't connected up yet, but uh, it's not really needed, but it's, it's there just in case I do. So we just started up. You can hear the vacuum pump kick in, just charges the system up. Obviously the gauge is uh, lit up like Christmas tree because uh, it, just got, it hasn't got a petrol engine, so it doesn't know what to do. And the Coulomb counter gauge is started up because that's running off the 12 volts. Curtis gauge hasn't yet started because that's connected to the uh, high voltage controller. So the next thing to do is what I've done is wired the um, contactors, the 80 volt contactor up to the uh, start position. So if you click it as though you start the old petrol car, you can hear the contactor click in and the Curtis gauge is now started up and the um, Coulomb counter is now looking at the uh, 80 volts or 79 volts of the battery and there's a small amount of drain because the DC DC converters um, Taking a small amount of power to charge the uh, 12 volt battery up Obviously all these lights stay on And the other thing I've put in though is in the middle here. I've got a selector switch for forward and reverse So I've just um, used a little rotary switch in there. I've got a little four position a neutral and a reverse position so it's just a case of simply clicking that when it's driving in reverse it seems to reduce the power uh, and the speed of the throttle so you don't go flying backwards as fast as you go flying forwards uh, and then I've got another neutral position over here so putting it in a neutral position just disables the drive completely um, and so you can't press the throttle and go off and there we are, that's everything in the cabin. Okay, so this is the charging socket. Obviously it replaces the original petrol cap space. So here I've got a Type 1 uh, J1772 socket uh, and I've just made an adapter plate um, to hold that um, and to avoid me making having to make a very deep adapter plate and mount it onto the flange of the socket, I've just made a shallow plate and then putting the socket on standoff so it sits it sits very flush with the um with the socket face in there so that opens up um and obviously i also had to sort out the proximity and pilot connections to make all the charger work so it's not just a case of simply plug it in you have to uh, have a control system that makes the charger work my reason for using the j1772 socket is because many years ago i used to have an Nissan leaf uh, and so have the uh, pod point already installed for that. So it made sense to use the same socket type. So just to show how that works now, at the moment the car has to be on for the charging to work. So I, that is something I need to sort out, but it's not a priority. It, it works as it is, and it currently makes sense as it is. So if I switch the car on, everything's kicked in, and then I can connect. And charge. And you can just start to hear the charging fans um, click on and it's now charging away at 18 amps. So you can see here on the state of charge meter all the um, charge power that's going in. So this is a standard Coulomb counter that I've bought of state of charge meter. And this is just measuring just voltage and current really. Um, and you can see there the reading on the top is just under 80 volts going in. And the current going into the batteries just dropping now just about 8 amps. You can also see the ampere hours 
um, currently at 59 amper hours going in so I'd set this to 60 amper hour system uh, and you can see the watts going in there as well so it's at 700 watts um, so it's very useful to see those numbers go in so what this does is this tots up all the power that goes into the batteries and then when you're driving it then takes works out all the power that comes out of the batteries and so you know your range uh, and the power that's left it's got various settings on the right hand side of the gauge um, not particularly helpful but they just allow you to set um, over current protection, uh, low voltage protection and so on so there's a few settings on there and once it's all charged you can now when you press the button it now knows that it's disconnecting so it's pre-cut the power and then you're out. so that's it for this video um, hopefully the next video I'll be driving it around on the road so um, bye for now